The Morning Brew is uh, back here on uh, this beautiful Thursday, and uh, Amber Hendren, I'm Larry Ahrens. You like theater? Oh, I love it, but well, I really love, yes, the National Hispanic Cultural Center. I do, and, too. Uh, everything that they bring. It's a neat facility. So rich. It is. Um, it is Theater Thursday here on The Morning Brew, and uh, this segment brought to you by our friends at the Albuquerque Theater Guild. You always want to know what's on stage? Man, go to abqtheater.org, and they got it all right there. This is such an active theater community, and you're in luck because we have this large um, Latin theater festival that's about to get underway. And uh, with us today are a couple of special guests. I've known this gentleman for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph Wasson uh, Jr. is with us today, and uh, he is associate director of the National Hispanic Cultural Center. How are you? I'm doing great. I bet we've known each other 25 years or so. I, I would say about that. Maybe more. I, I, I knew your kids when they were, were in elementary school, and you said they're already 37. Yes, so. they are. So, yeah. yeah, they're not kids anymore. Eh? No, not at all. <laughs> it's good to see you. You're looking good. Thank you very uh, much. Also with us uh, here on the couch is uh, Shibana. Uh, pronounce your last name. Coyla. It's great to see you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. And uh, I want to know all about this festival. It's uh, about to start uh, out at the NHCC. The, uh, the, fe the festival, is, it's entitled uh, Siembra. And uh, it almost kind of happened like a fluke. But uh, in any case, we're doing nine plays in nine months over 16 weekends consisting of 62 shows with 9,000 seats available mm. at the National Hispanic Cultural Center. It's the first uh, Latino theater festival ever in the, uh, uh, New Mexico. And it's kind of unprecedented that you have a, a theater festival over a period of nine months. Yes. You know, a lot of times you have theater festivals, and they happen over a period of three or four weeks. But it just, it's just something that happened. The, the National Hispanic Cultural Center absolutely excited about the festival and we are just excited about how it came about and and all the the brilliant and wonderful productions that are part of the festival so. wow that's <clears throat> sounds really wonderful and now this particular play is about rio puerco it is yes it's the first play. Uh, it's, we're, we're so honored right. to be the kickoff event for the festival. The play premiered in Santa Fe in April, and so this will be its Albuquerque premiere. So tell us about the play. It's called When the Stars Trembled in Rio Puerco, and it's an oral history play based on recuerdos, memories of the Rio Puerco collected by Nazario Garcia, who's probably one of the most celebrated folk historians in New Mexico. Mm. And it covers the period of the 1900s to the 1950s and stories of everyday life in the forced now ghost towns in the Rio Puerco. So we sort of cover the range of everyday experiences, but also things like influenza, the Navajo coming on raids, uh, the land laws changing. And so it's really um, kind of an experience of what was once in the Rio Puerco, life in the Rio Puerco. And this is your creation? I adapted it from this book, mm -hmm. uh, the first book of oral histories that Nazario Garcia published called Recuerdos de los Viejitos. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw him speak uh, just about two years ago. And he spoke about a river and his abuela and something about the stories. They sort of just leapt off his, they, le they just leapt up in front of me like scenes. Mm -hmm. And so I made it into a play. Have you done this kind of work before? Uh, I've done documentaries, but this is my first full-length play, <laughs> so it's kind wow. of a mystery how it happened. It's very it, ambitious. You know, it just happened one step at a time. I saw the images, I began writing scenes based on the words. The, the book itself, it has these beautiful vignettes, mm -hmm. like thing, uh, and so I just took the vignettes and sort of made monologues into dialogues, made it into scene, and so it felt like every step led to another step, and then the words met actors, and the actors met scenes, and the stage, and it just sort of developed. Mm. So this is a creative evolution for you, because uh, I, I was reading about your background. You, you, you work mostly in documentaries, which I is all fact-based reality stuff. And so and it was a natural kind of progression yeah, in a way. That's wonderful. 
Gosh, it's a whole new career for you. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> the liveness of theater. I mean, the experience both of doing the play but also of the response to the play. What happens in a live theater when you hear these words and see these, um, encounter these scenes, you know, because then the past isn't over there, it's right here. Mm. I was just going to ask you how that relates to today and how this, this, these stories and recuerdos how are they relevant to our audience? I think depending on who you are and where you are in your life, the play will have a different relevance. For some people, it might be simply about the connection to stories, and that connects to anybody, anywhere. Um, for some people, it might be stories of why people chose that place to stay, why people left, mm -hmm. and then the story of also what contributed to the death of these towns the drought, the famine, the changes in, in, uh, in the land regulation laws. So depending on who you are, I think when you come to the show, you will find the relevance for you. And what a beautiful setting that you get to work in, too. It's just such an incredible theater. Yeah, and we're, they're converting it for, into a black box just for the play. We're actually converting the stage into a black box theater, so the audience for When the Stars Trembled in Rio Puerco will be on stage mm. with the performers. So we're creating an intimate setting in the Albuquerque Journal Theater, and we're not even using the 691 seats. We're setting up 100 seats on the stage, so they will be able to really, really relate to what's going on with the play. Hmm. So you're going to open uh, September 25th. That's right. And uh, how's rehearsals going? <laughs> They're a little bit better because we've done it before, but it's still new. I mean, we did it, at, at, you know, in, in Santa Fe in April. But it's still, every time you do it, it's, it's new. Yes. And each, every time you redo it, you find a different nuance. And the basic story is a man returns to the place he was born to collect stories from these viejitos, four viejitos, who not only tell him those stories, but they sing it, and they dance it, and they mm -hmm. act it. And there's a young uh, character and his mother. So they're living in the past and the present. So it's very dynamic. So rehearsals, are just, they're, they're full of movement and emotion. So it's, it's been... <laughs> Great. And then to have the audience so close where yes. you can feel them. Yes. Absolutely. Now that the, just takes it to another level. There's several plays, and you're kicking off with a great one here, uh, Joseph, but right. uh, the most famous among them is, uh, of course, Rodolfo and I is That's right. Uh, iconic work. Right. Uh, as, as far as the plays, most of the plays will be taking place in our small theater, Wells Fargo Auditorium, which is 100 seat, very intimate. But of course, Bless Me Ultima, uh, uh, the iconic play, as you said, will be presented in the, uh, our large theater, Albuquerque Journal Theater. Yeah. So uh, uh, it'll be 691 people there nice. for, for that play. That's but, next year in April. Right, in April, absolutely. Okay. Now there's a whole yeah. calendar of these events. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go uh, to the NHCC website, right. have a look at uh, all the events coming up. Yeah, www.naccnm.org, and you can take a look at all the plays. Uh, there's something every month. So now in September, October, November, January, February, March, April, and May. So there's something happening every month with uh, uh, under the auspice of Siembra Latino Theater Festival. So. Wow. Shivana, where are you from? Uh, originally, I'm from India. Uh, my last name is Portuguese because the Portuguese were in India. So mm -hmm. that's originally where I'm from. But I traveled a lot in South America, Mongolia, Palestine. And now <laughs> Nouveau Mexique. No, Nouveau Mexique. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And what, what do you think about our beautiful state? Well, I mean, I came here because, uh, like many people talk about, it was like a una llamada. You know, mm -hmm. something calls you. And it might have been the land. There's something really vivid. Mm -hmm. So it, this is home. Wonderful. Well, congrats on the kickoff of this. It's gonna, that's an ambitious project, Joseph. It's mm -hmm. yeah. going to keep you guys hopping over there. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's going to keep us hopping. <laughs> All right, Joseph Watson, Watson with the uh, National Hispanic Cultural Center, the uh, uh, Siembra uh, Latino Theater Festival is about to kick off uh, with this uh, wonderful ladies play starting September 25th. Wow. Uh, come back and talk about the other ones, too, would you, Absolutely. Joseph? Please do. We'd love You're invited you. back. Thank, Thank you. you both for being here. Thank you. Best of luck. All right, to you. we'll come Thank back you. with more Morning Brew in just a sec.